Today I calculate the capital allocation line for three assets in Excel. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Let's get straight into the calculation of the capital allocation line for three assets in Excel. So this is where we left our analysis of the three asset portfolio last time. And we calculated the global minimum variance portfolio, the one that has the minimum amount of risk. And you can see that plotted on the chart right here. And then last time we calculated the optimized stock portfolio, which you can see plotted on the chart in green here. And you'll remember that in order to optimize that, the data solver determined that we shouldn't actually be holding any Cisco stock at all and should be distributing the portfolio across Pfizer and Amex in a ratio of 59% to 41. And it was that ratio that gave us the maximum sharp ratio that you can see here. Now, this time we're going to plot the capital allocation line which is a tool that allows us to blend a higher risk stock portfolio with a no risk asset such as a government bond. So like before, we'll start with a template here and then go through this and complete each of the metrics. So the first step is actually plotting the capital allocation line itself. And for that, we need just two points. We need that that represents being fully invested in the higher risk stock portfolio. And based on what we did last time, we know that the standard deviation of that optimized portfolio is this value here. The expected return of that portfolio is this value here. And then for the risk free asset, the standard deviation or the risk here, of course, is zero. And the expected daily return of this is this value here. And so this gives us the X coordinates and the Y coordinates of the two points we need in order to plot the linear relationship. So let's get that onto our chart now by adding a new data series here that we'll call the capital allocation line and the X values are of course the two standard deviation values here and the y values are the expected return values Click OK and I'll just change this so that we can see the line okay so now that we have the capital allocation line in place we can now start to think about where the desired portfolio will lie on this line and this usually is dependent on the level of desired risk so let's say that we're happy with a one percent daily standard deviation and that's what we're going to aim for here so in order to identify where that is we need to change the balance of the stock portfolio with the risk free asset. And although we had a calculation here for three assets in the optimized stock portfolio, which is this equation, now that that's already complete, we can now revert to the more simplistic calculation for two assets, because effectively we just have the stock portfolio as a whole with the risk free asset here, so two in total. However, it is rather simpler than this in reality, because the standard deviation of the risk free asset, let's say sigma two here, is zero. And so this second term and the third term as well, both disappear 
So we're left with just the first term square rooted. So this is effectively the square root of the stock portfolio squared multiplied by the standard deviation of the portfolio squared, which is this value here. And then the portfolio expected return is simply a weighted average of the two expected return values, which is going to be the weighting here multiplied by the expected return of that stock portfolio plus the weighting of the risk-free asset multiplied by its expected return. And now as we alter the weightings here, those values for the standard deviation and expected daily return automatically adjust. And so in a moment when we ask the Excel data solver to adjust these to give us our optimal risk of 1%, the only value that we'll need to ask it to change is this first one here and all of the others update automatically. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, because we were using this in the last episode, it's actually remembered the solver parameters that we used in order to produce the optimized stock portfolio. And so we now just need to go through these and change them to serve our new purpose. So we don't need the majority of these constraints anymore because we only have a single constraint, which is that the weighting of the stock needs to be greater than zero and less than one. So let's just add in those simpler constraints. And we're going to say that this value must be less than or equal to one. And also greater than or equal to zero. And now instead of using the minimize or maximize functions that we've used previously, we're going to request an exact value now of our objective. And so the objective is the new portfolio standard deviation here. And if you remember, we're going to ask for a value of exactly 1%, which of course is 0 0.01. And then the value we'll change to achieve that is simply the weighting of the stock portfolio. And we're now ready to produce that solution. So we can see it's been successful in finding a solution. And if we look here, we can see that it's been successful in creating a 1% risk of the overall portfolio. The expected daily return is 0.1%. And to achieve that, we would need 75% of our stock portfolio and just 25% of the risk-free asset, such as a government bond. So just to make sure, we're going to plot this value now onto our capital allocation line. So if we add a new data series, which we'll call the overall portfolio. The X value will be this, which we already know is going to be 1%. The Y value is the calculated expected return here. If we click OK. We can now see that point right here. Let's just make that a little larger. And because that's lying on the capital allocation line, we can have a fairly good degree of confidence that we've done the calculation correctly. And the fact that we have a weighting of 75% in the stock, visually, we can see that that's represented by the fact that the marker on the capital allocation line is much closer to the stock portfolio here than it is to the risk-free asset down here. So again, that makes sense. OK, so that concludes our analysis work in Excel now as part of this series. In the final four episodes, I'll be covering what's required to adapt modern portfolio theory to day trading and swing trading and looking at the changes in methodology that are required to use it within this different context. OK, so please do subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when new episodes become available. But now, until next time, trade safe.